In a new book, The Tyranny of Merit, What's Become of the Common Good, political philosopher Michael J. Sandel, he explores solutions to globalization, inequality, and deindustrialization. In the book, Sandel disputes that the leftist ideal that even a perfect meritocracy could turn bad. And Sandel explains a way out of the crisis is to dismantle meritocratic assumptions that have dubbed blue-collar workers less successful than their professional peers and recognize the dignity of their work. Author and philosopher and professor of government theory at Harvard University Law School, Michael J. Sandel, joins us now for more on his vision of a virtuous society and to also discuss a potential advantage for Joe Biden among working class Americans this November. Great to have you, Professor. Thank you for being with us. Good to see you, sir. Good to be with you. Good to be with you. Just lay out a little bit the central premise of your work, and it's actually something we talk a lot about on this show, the problem with this concept of the meritocracy and the goal of American public policy being to essentially perfect that meritocracy. Well, Crystal, the main purpose of the book is to try to make sense of what's gone wrong with our civic life. Why the deep polarization? And it begins with the, the growing divide between winners and losers in recent decades. And this has had the effect of demoralizing, even humiliating those who have left behind. And the reason is that it's not just about inequality of income and wealth. It's also about changing attitudes towards success. Those who've landed on top have come to believe that their success is their own doing that they deserve the bounty, the market showers on them, and that by implication, those who fell behind must deserve their fate as well. This generates the resentment that leads many working people to turn against the Democratic Party and mainstream parties and to embrace authoritarian populist figures like Donald Trump. And, Professor, just to push you a little bit, I mean, you kind of work at one of the scions. You work at Harvard University, one of the places where a lot of the people who I have met who most ardently hold these beliefs kind of come from. So what has gone wrong in our most elite institutions like Harvard to imbue a character of this meritocracy and making people feel so superior to working Americans that has generated animosity on both sides? Well, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I do write in the book about the problem of the meritocratic hubris of elites and the tendency of elites to look down on those less fortunate, less credentialed than themselves. I think at the heart of the problem is that we have in recent decades cast universities as the arbiters of opportunity. This is largely a result of the political message that Democrats and Republicans alike have offered in dealing with the inequalities that have resulted from globalization, instead of tackling them head on, they've said, instead, they've offered a rhetoric of rising, individual upward mobility by getting a university degree. What you earn will depend on what you learn, they told us. You can make it if you try. This has made a university degree, preferably from a brand name university, the ticket or so the politicians promise to upward mobility. But I think that's the wrong way to think about how to deal with inequality because most Americans, after all, don't have a four year university degree. Nearly two thirds don't. So we need to create an economy that, that addresses the needs and affirms the dignity of everyone regardless of how lustrous their credentials. Mm -hmm. And in a way, what you're saying, while it makes a lot of sense to me, is very controversial because you're sort of talking about a different view of the American dream, right? The, the classic version of the American dream is like, in an ideal world, everyone has a chance to go out and work hard, get that education, and make it in American society. And the corollary to that is if you don't make it, there's something wrong with you, which gets into that, that word humiliation that you used, um, which I think is really true and is also also a very powerful emotion, very powerful way to feel and create some of these outcomes that we've seen. But has the American dream always included that sort of like corollary, corollary of humiliation? Is that a modern invention? And how would you shift the way that we think about these things? Well, it's, it's true that there is something that may be provocative and controversial 
in my diagnosis of what's gone wrong. And I should emphasize, broadening access to higher education is a good thing. I'm deeply in favor of it. How could I be against it? I've spent my life in higher education. And yet, casting a college degree, making that a necessary condition in our economy for dignified work and a decent life, that's the problem. The problem is, is making that degree a condition for dealing with inequality as if individual upward mobility itself could solve the problem. And it brings out, as you're suggesting, and here's where people may disagree, but I think it brings out the dark side of meritocracy, which is that those who land on top begin to inhale too deeply of their success and to look down on those who lack the college degrees that the politicians tell us are a necessary condition for rising, for competing and winning in a global economy. That's a harsh ethic of success. It generates anger and resentment, and I would say legitimate grievances among those who are left out, those who face stagnant wages, but not only that, a kind of loss of social esteem and respect mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. dignity. And that's what I think we're missing in our politics. I think that's what the Democratic Party continues to miss. And unless they address this sense of humiliation and exclusion, uh, they're going to have a hard time rivaling the, the kind of populist uh, uh, politics of humiliation and grievance represented by Donald Trump. Hmm. And then last question for you, sir, how do we fix it? Um, is it a political problem? Is it a civic problem? Is it a mixture of both? What are the solutions you propose? It's both. It's both. I think we should reconsider the idea that universities are arbiters of opportunity who define merit in a highly competitive meritocratic society. We should rethink that and invest more in uh, community colleges, in vocational and technical training in order to enhance the, the uh, status and prestige and recognition of a great many working people. Um, I think we need to put the dignity of work right at the center of political debate. That, not individual mobility through a university degree, is a broader, more democratic way of addressing the loss of esteem that a great many working people feel. And finally, it's a matter of attitudes. I think we should reconsider our meritocratic hubris, hubris reminding the successful need to remind themselves of the role of luck in life. Yeah. And, and with that, a sense of their indebtedness to the wider community that made their success uh, possible. This points the way, uh, yeah. I hope, to a politics of the common good. Well, and actually, um, on that, you've sparked one more question for me, which is that it seems to me that the um, centrality of luck and good fortune has right. never been more obvious than right now in this moment. I mean, in the pandemic, you had 40 million Americans file for unemployment insurance at the same time that our nation's billionaires gained half a trillion dollars, right? Through no fault of their own. You've got a pandemic, you've got an economic shutdown, you've got people out of work, and you've got a system that's set up to just continually funnel more and more money to the top. Do you think right. that some of this mythology that's been built up around the American dream, around the meritocracy, is getting broken down right now through this pandemic? It's possible. I think there, this is a moment because now we suddenly recognize our deep dependence on the work of, we now call them essential workers, people who don't get, who aren't paid very well or honored very much traditionally in our economy. Suddenly we realize we are all dependent on them. So I hope that this can be the beginning of a turn in our politics, where we put right at the center the question of what does it mean to affirm the dignity of work? And those of us who can work from home, who can work remotely, hold meetings on Zoom, maybe we should consider the role of luck and good fortune that helped us on our way 
this could promote the kind of humility that it could open us to a broader public debate about what we owe one another as citizens. Yeah, yeah I think that's well, well said. said sir. Highly recommend the book to everyone. Thank you so much, Professor, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm more rising for you after this.